I'm interested in like, what was the spark or like what led you to recognize that this is an addiction? Well, I, I guess everything springs from a number of different areas. I mean, one was, you know, I'm 73, 74 next month. So I kind of grew up in the 50s, 60s. And I was impressed with how middle class people in suburbia kind of classed one another and shut out the rest of the world. I mean, there was, if you go back to my grandparents, there was much more of a community and extended family. And I was, uh, imp and so I formulated the idea that people are brought up in a kind of a modern era, you know, modern now being 50 years ago, mm -hmm. where the idea is to couple up with somebody, form an economic and a family unit, and go your own way. And that really started to take on the aspects of being an addiction, especially when it goes haywire, mm -hmm. when there are people who completely shut out the rest of the world. And then you, gra you go from there to kind of one of those controlling relationships. You know, usually you think of the man being in charge, where he insists that the woman cut off contact with her family and maybe quit her job and do everything around him. I I'll just think of two current examples in the news. Mm -hmm. A man went into his, and a woman, went into a synagogue uh, in a kosher food store and killed a bunch of people. And when you read the backdrop, you start thinking, how did they both get into this? And the man sort of had military training and he was part of this uh, black Israelite group. I, I don't know much about it, but the woman was recruited. She was sort of a single middle-aged woman. Mm -hmm. And so you start wondering, how did that relationship develop? And she, the, her upstairs neighbor, said, well, you know, she used to be really friendly and, you know, we used to have dinner every once in a while. Mm. And then she became involved with this guy and you can just see his madness took over the two of them. Mm. I mean, who's who's going to go into a store and start killing people, including mm. children? That's how it, emotionally involving a relationship, that made sense to that woman. Yeah. You yeah. know, oh, he's got this view and I, I want him to love me. Yeah. I'll give you another example from the other side. There's recently a case, I think it was at Boston University. I think it was a Korean woman and a man. And she, she's on trial for manslaughter now. She's been charged with manslaughter. She induced him to commit suicide. Well, how nutty things like that evolve, it's hard to know. But at one point, they were sending messages to each other at the rate of a thousand a day. They were sending them at every minute. Mm -hmm. And so it's, that's starting to be like exactly like a smoking or a drug addiction where they're in constant contact. Mm -hmm. And in this case, the woman was controlling the man's destiny in his life. Mm -hmm. And when you start saying, well, does something impair you? When something kills you, that's the ultimate in it. So, you know, I've gone from thinking about more stable middle-class relationships and saying, you know, they have a lot of addictive elements. They shut off the world. And then you gradually get to where there are extreme examples that are as bad as any possible addiction. And in fact, you know, one thing I say when people look down their nose at the idea of interpersonal addictions and they say, well, what about Oxycontin? And I say, you know, more people die due to love addictions and drug addictions. If you count suicide and murder, and I'll just throw one other name out there. In my Psychology Today blog, I wrote about Anthony Bourdain. Yeah. He's, he, used, he, he had been in rehab for heroin and cocaine. Mm -hmm. He committed suicide, and everybody said, oh, look at his toxicology. He's probably on drugs again. And he was totally clean. But he was involved with a younger woman. Uh, maybe there'll be some kind of book eventually. And it seemed to be eating away at his mind that yeah. he was in a situation where, you know, she was seeing other people that supposedly was their deal. But somehow he's over 60. He couldn't incorporate that. That was a shocking thing because he's a man with, he did have a career. Everybody knows Anthony Bourdain. Right. And he had an 11 year old daughter at the time. And then you really go, wow. Yeah. Somebody do that to their family. So yeah. love addictions. When I say this, I'm not 
making this up to make, I wrote a book called With Archie Bryce. Yeah. yeah. I don't think, I think love, addi- love addictions are the most serious addictions that there are. I, I, there's an old heroin addict guy I know who now runs a treatment program. He, he just retired, actually. His name's Howard Josepher. And we were talking about a friend we knew who was involved in a relationship. And I said, you know, Howard, a heroin addiction, it's just like what you started out saying, Jenny. Well, at some level, you can take it or leave it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, you know, when you're in a love relationship and somebody's rejecting you. Yeah. And so Howard, he made it, he had a good line. He said, well, that's personal. It's like when somebody says, oh, I don't want you anymore. And that's, that's an often the, the prompt, the stimulus to murder or suicide. Mm-hmm. And they're taking away what you feel is your essence. That's mm-hmm. worse than quitting heroin or smoking. 